Hello everyone, welcome to another video on CompTIA Security Plus. In today's video, our topic of discussion is cryptography. Cryptography is a complex and lengthy topic, so without further ado, let's get started. So question number one is that digital signatures provide, and we have to select three correct answers, and the options are integrity, authentication, confidentiality, authorization, non-repudiation, and accounting. And the correct options are integrity, authentication, and non-repudiation. And this is how the digital signature works. So let's suppose this sender wants to send this data and he wants he or she wants to ensure the integrity authentication and non repudiation of this data so first of all the data is hashed or a hash is taken of this data using hash algorithm and then this hash is encrypted using the sender private key so we have now an encrypted hash plus the original document. So both of these are sent to the receiver. The receiver then again takes the hash of the document, the original unencrypted document, this is the hash, and he decrypts the encrypted hash using the public key of the sender. So Thus, he recovers the hash, the hash. So, if both these two hash they match, then this means that the integrity and the uh, uh, authentication and non repudiation of the data as well as the sender is valid. Question number two is that in cryptography, the number of bits in a key used by a cryptographic algorithm is referred to as key size or key length. The key length determines the maximum number of combinations required to break the encryption algorithm. Therefore, typically a longer key means stronger cryptographic security. And we have two options, true or false, and the correct option is true. So if we have two keys, one is 1 to 8 bits long and the other is let's suppose 156 bits long. So this key is more stronger. So the uh, longer the key length, the stronger the cryptographic security. Question number three is that in cryptography, the term key stretching refers to a mechanism for extending the length of a cryptographic key to make it more secure against brute force attack and again we have two options true and false and the correct option is true so key stretching means increasing the length of the cryptographic key so as to make it more secure against the attack specifically the brute force attack Question number four is which of the following answer refers to a type of additional input that increases password complexity and provides better protection against brute force dictionary and rainbow table attacks. So these are all password cracking attacks. And uh, the options for these questions are speed, IV, salt or shim. And the correct option is salt. So the salt is a pseudo random number that is added to a password that the user enters so as to make it more complex against the different type of password cracking attacks. Question number five is the pseudo random data added to a password before hashing is called. And again, the options are shim, salt, seed, and IV. And the correct option is again the salt. So the salt is the additional pseudo random number that is added to a password before the hashing. Question number six is that what are the characteristic features of elliptic curve cryptography or ECC? We have to select three answers, and the options are asymmetric encryption, low processing power requirements 
suitable for small wireless devices, higher processing power requirements, symmetric encryption, and not suitable for small wireless devices. And correct options are ECC is asymmetric algorithm. It is suitable for low or it requires low processing power requirements. It has low processing power requirements and so it is suitable for small wireless devices. So this is asymmetric. It requires low power, uh, low processing power and thus it is suitable for small devices or small wireless devices. Question number seven is which of the following answer refers to a solution designed to strengthen the security of a session key? And the options are ECB, PFS, PFS, or PFX. And the correct option is PFS or perfect forward secrecy. So the PFS, also called forward secrecy, refers to an encryption system that changes the session key used to encrypt and decrypt information frequently and automatically. This ongoing process ensures that even if most recent key is hacked, minimal amount of sensitive data is exposed. So the PFS, what it does that the session key, it is randomly and regularly changed during the uh, session of the two parties. So instead of using a single encryption uh, session key, the key is changed regularly. So even if the hacker uh, got hand or uh, hacks the uh, session key, he will be able to decrypt only a limited amount of data because after a while the key will again be changed using the PFS. Question number eight is that an emerging field of advanced computing technology based on the principle of physics is known as, and the options are DNA computing, edge computing, quantum computing, and fog computing. And the correct option is quantum computing. It is the emerging and advanced computing technology, and it is based on the principle and laws of physics. Question number nine is that according to prediction, the most future proof cryptographing solution should be, and the options are quantum cryptography, symmetric key cryptography, post quantum cryptography, asymmetric key cryptography, or public key cryptography. And the correct option is so the future proof or the future strong cryptographic algorithm should be post quantum cryptography it should withstand the quantum computing power or quantum computing processing power question number 10 is that an asymmetric encryption key designed to be used only for a single session transaction is known as and the options are static key ephemeral key asymmetric and symmetric key and the correct option is ephemeral Question number 11 is that what are the characteristic features of a session key? We have to select two answers and the options are used during a single session, asymmetric key, reused during multiple session or asymmetric key. And the correct options are used during, used during a single session and it is a symmetric key. Symmetric means that same key is used by the sender and receiver for encryption and decryption. Question number 12 is that unlike stream ciphers which process data by encrypting individual bits, block cipher divide data into separate fragments and encrypt each fragment separately. And the options are true and false. And the correct option is true. Yes, the block cipher as the name indicates, it encrypts data in blocks or in fragments as against to the stream fiber which encrypts data one bits at a time in streams. Question number 13 is which of the block cipher mode listed below provides both data integrity and confidentiality? And the options are CBC, GCM, ECB or CTR. And the correct option is GCM 
and GCM state stands for Galios counter mode. Question number 14 is that a type of encryption scheme where the same key is used to encrypt and decrypt data is referred to as we have to select three answers and the options are session key encryption, public key encryption, symmetric key encryption, asymmetric encryption or secret key encryption and the correct options are session key encryption, symmetric key encryption and secret key encryption. So these three they use the same key to encrypt and decrypt data. Question number 15 is that symmetric encryption algorithm requires large amount of processing power for both encryption and decryption of data which makes them slower in comparison to asymmetric encryption cycle and the options are correct and false, true and false and the correct option is false. So the symmetric key is very fast and it requires less processing power and that's why this uh, symmetric key is used to process or encrypt and decrypt data in bulk. So this statement is false. Question number 16 is that in asymmetric encryption any message encrypted with the use of a public key can only be decrypted by applying the same algorithm and a matching private key and vice versa. And again we have two options correct, true and false and the correct option is true. So yes, in asymmetric key the public key can be used to decrypt the data that is sent by the user using uh, in, uh, that the user has encrypted using his private key. So the public and private key they, they are a pair but they must be uh, generated using the same algorithm. So if you encrypt any data with public key, it can be decrypted with private key and in the same manner if you encrypt data with private key, it can be decrypted with public key. Question number 17 is that which of the following algorithm listed below does not belong to the category of symmetric fibers and we have a lot of options so let's get straight to the correct option and the correct option is RSA. So RSA is a symmetric algorithm and rest all are symmetric. Question number 18 is that which of the algorithm listed below does not fall into the category of asymmetric encryption and the correct option of these all is AES. So AES is symmetric. It is symmetric algorithm and let's uh, rest all are asymmetric algorithms. Question number 19 is that which of the following terms illustrate the security through obscurity concept? Select all that apply and the options are code obfuscation, steganography, SSIT, broadcast suppression and encryption. Correct options are code obfuscation, steganography and SSID broadcast subscription, uh, suppression. These are the correct options. Question number 20 is that what is the purpose of technography and the options are checking data integrity, verifying hash values, hiding data within another piece of data or encrypting data and the correct option is hiding data within another piece of data and an example is that we can hide some data inside a picture. So this process is called technography. Question number 21 is that which cryptographic solution should be best suited for low power devices? We already studied this in our, in our previous question and the options are ECC, EFS, SED and FDE and the correct option is ECC or elliptic curve cryptography. 
so this uh, uh, we can see that the 20, 256 bits of ECC is equal to 307 bits of RSA. So using less bits and using less processing power, it gives us same strength and that's why it can be used in low power devices. Question number 22 is that which of the following terms apply to the concept of confidentiality and the options are hashing, encryption, security through obscurity, MFA or digital certificate and the correct option is encryption. So using encryption we ensure the confidentiality, hashing is used for security, this is also used for in, uh, confidentiality, security through obscurity but encryption is the main uh, way through which we secure or uh, uh, encrypt data and again uh, MFA multi-factor uh, authentication is used for authentication and digital signature as we study digital certificate it is also used for uh, authentication and integrity. Question number 23 is that which of the following terms apply to the concept of integrity and again the options are encryption, security through obscurity, hashing, digital certificate or MFA and the correct option is hashing. So hashing relates to integrity. Question number 24 is that which of the following terms apply to the authentication process? And again, we have all the same option, and the correct option is security through obscurity. And question number 25 is that which of the following terms apply to the concept of non repudiation? And the options are security through obscurity, digital certificate, MFA, hashing, and encryption and the correct option is digital certification certificate question number 26 is that which of the following terms apply to the authentication process and the options are again we have the same option as was in the previous questions and the correct option is mfa so multi factor authentication can be used to ensure the process of authentication so that's all today for today please like and subscribe to my channel thank you and bye